But now we're going to go over some budget decks for this Fusion Synchro Xyz event. Now, keep in mind that this is a relatively high power event, given some of the decks that are legal. <coughs> so, even though there are going to be budget options available, they're not... You don't expect to like get five wins or anything with budget decks. This isn't this isn't the event where you can probably do that with. That being said, there are some loaner decks available, and you can add Salaz Resort if you don't if you really don't want to play, you know, if you really don't want to build a, a deck for this and you don't own any uh, appropriate deck for this event, you can play some loaners. They're they're o okay. I'll go over the ones that are uh, the best to play for each type. So first of all, for fusions, we have the Feet deck. Yes, yes, this card name is called Dual Avatar Feet. Now, don't 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 catch me play watching you play this because this deck is this deck sucks ass. It's also nobody knows how to play it. So basically, that means that if you are playing this deck, the only reason you're playing this is because you're you're a uh, avid enjoyer of feet. And look, we, we don't we don't kink shame here. I'm just saying you don't need to expose yourself like that. Okay, just, just move, move on. Uh, next one, uh, illusions and uh, chimera. This is probably the most consistent of the fusion combo decks. It or combo decks, loner decks. It has a self-contained actual plan. It has a one-card combo: cornfield Kodo plus or mirror swords knight. They get you your entire engine going, and then your engine. Honestly, if you resolve that, you just actually pretty the uh, these you you can actually win the game off that. And you even have a this deck gives you fusion armament for free. So the idea with fusion armament is you're supposed to special summon Chimera to find a mythical beast on your field first before you do anything. And because you control Chimera now, your Cornfield Kodo has a is live. So Cornfield Kodo, basically you pitch this card to add Mirror Source Knight most of the time, but it has a graveyard effect where if you control Chimera, you can banish its card to negate any targeting card. So stuff like Valor, stuff like Imperm, while you control Chimera, get that shit out of there. Just this, this can negate that. So you, Armament is like sort of like a pseudo call by the grave in a sense. So you it even it gives you protection. It, it's just the problem with this deck is and it's going to be a common theme with the loner decks. Zero outs to Noir. And you're not an Xyz deck, so you're actually going to face, you're going to match up against Pearly quite often. And if you go second, you're, uh, you're probably just going to lose on the spot. Like, you, maybe you can get lucky on an Imperm, on a Black Cat, and maybe that will stop them. But other than that, like, it's, it, it's quite rough. Like, you probably just want to, if your opponent goes, if you have no hand trap, your opponent goes, like, first move, activate a memory spell, just just pause, just probably go next, save just save both of you some time. But yeah, Guardian Chimera on your opponent's turn, if you go first, is quite potent. Guardian Chim Chimera Fusion dodging in terms on your stuff like that, it's fine. But this is probably the deck I would go for if you want to play a, a loner fusion deck. Dark World. Um, I don't think this is good, because Dark World, <laughs> this is, is this the only fusion spell? So like, Dark World is a link-based deck. It, it's not a... It's not a fusion deck. I don't know why Konami's doing this. Like all of the the combos for Dark One involves fucking Saryuja, Curious, all that stuff. So like the fusion stuff is like the boneless. It's like the extremely boneless aspect of the Dark World strategy, and it's already not that consistent to begin with, on honestly. But th this is like this is a poorly built Dark World Dark World build in my opinion. If you're a Dark World enjoyer, you probably have a you, you can probably even build a fusion build better than this, so... Yeah, this is maybe a... Uh, this is gonna be a pass. In, in my opinion. Uh, let's go over to Synchro Loners. So... Crimson uh, King uh, Resonators, this is probably the best of the three. Once again, no else to Noir, so you know, you know what you're doing if you go second against Hurley, but other than that, this has... Uh, Crimson Guy is a really, really good card, and uh, so I think Soul Re Re Crimson is Vision Resonator. Vision Resonator is the one that you can add uh, 
uh, Grim Nagaya, it is like a Rilda, and then when this goes to the grave, it searches your Rilda, so on and so forth. Wish of the Black Forest, unironically a good combo piece, since you can uh, make I uh, use it with like your Red Resonators to go into uh, Red Rising Dragon stuff like that. It's this is a pretty decent loner. The traps are really powerful. This one is a uh, this is a, if you control level eight or higher single monster. Banish all monsters on the field except the highest level. So this is just like a full board wipe banish. Like that's that's pretty pretty decent. And uh, red zone is just a this is a this is a pop, but it's also a continuous. So it's like a continuous. It's like you're in archetype branded beast. So without a, tr a needing to tribute a monster. So yeah, this is probably the most confident of the three loner decks. I'm, I can I haven't played. Resonator myself, so I don't know the exact combo lines, but I'm sure you can uh, half-ass a combo into like a uh, hot into like this Vader plus a hot red Dragon Archfiend. So like that's like two negates the Odyssey. That's like for a loner deck, that's pretty good. Uh, Fabled, but like if you're not if you're not Doug Seif, I I would avoid this deck. This deck is first of all, this deck is hard as shit to play. And the reward is like not even that good, and it's also not that consistent. Even when you're running three of every card, like you, and again, your only chance against Purley is drawing in perm versus, but specifically a weak black cat, cat hand. Like this is not this, this. I mean, fabled, fabled enjoyers, go ahead, go ahead. But if you're a fabled enjoyer, you probably already have a better fabled deck than this. This is not a really, it's not a really good good build, and uh, Ursartic. Really, really, Konami. These are the three synchro decks you decide to, to, to showcase. Okay, Resonator, sure. Fabled, meh. Ursartic. Are, are you even trying? Like, first of all, this deck isn't even that expensive. So if you actually know how to play Ursartic, you definitely have a better build already than than whatever the hell this is. So yeah, good. <laughs> build your own Ursartic deck. It's gonna be better than. Than this. This is, feels like it's way too many minus Earth Sartic monsters. So yeah, re Synchro loners go for this one, and for the Exceed loners. So for the Exceed loners, we've got we've got Battling Boxer, which looks like I'm not gonna lie, this deck looks like it plays a hell of a lot of bricks down here. All all of all of these, these are like. Burying, burying, burying Ontopia is okay if you have combo, but like all of these rank of spells. The seventh one, the combo with your Baron's Chaos Rod, which is a one of. For, for some reason, uh, yeah, the, the point of Baron's Chaos Rod, I think, is it's active, is to trigger your rank up the seventh one. But when you're only running a one and one ratio, I don't know how that's supposed to be consistent. Also, like, Lead Yoke, Boneless Pearly. Like, the only advantage of this. Of this deck is that it's an Xyz deck, so you don't have to match up against Pearly or fucking Arise Heart or like all of that, all of that stuff. But still, this is like the worst Xyz boss out of. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dempsey. It's. I mean, it, it's nice. It's the new card. It's a it's a Rota, but I mean, it, yeah. The, I I think this deck is just not very like high enough power level for even. <laughs> Even among the loners, uh, Tistina. <laughs> okay, so I, I I talked a lot of shit about Tistina. This deck is honestly for a loner deck. This actually ain't that bad. It, Tistina is a go second deck, so that's kind of. I mean, why would you want to go second with it? Like, this isn't a proper build to go second with in the first place. There's not enough board breakers, so it, it's probably a lost cause anyways. But if you're gonna go second, this is, deck probably gives you the highest chance of, of doing so. It's just you gotta learn how to play Tasina if you if you want to play this loner. I don't know if that's worth it to you. Evils. This is the this is the Xyz loner that I would go with. Uh, it's di it's Dinos. It's you have Miscellaneous Saurus. Like you you have Misc. Everyone has read this. You have UCT. You have Double Evolution Bill. That's good enough. 
that's already way better than all the other XT Solar decks. Like that, that, that in itself. Like you could literally ignore all those fucking evil cards and just count these cards as bricks and like never interact with them, and you would probably be, you, this would still probably be fine. You can even make Logias and Dolkas if you want to go first, which uh, I'm not even sure you want to go first because you, do, you, it's not like you have to worry about Pearly because you're an Xyz deck, so you can honestly blind second and just kill them with Misk and like UTC and uh, a UCT and like all that stuff. Uh, he was he was our soul. You're never gonna make this because uh, Lars is a uh, better. Although funny enough, Lars is still worse than <laughs> Doka and Logia. It's 2024, and they're still printing evils, Zara exceeds that are worse than ones they printed in 2011. But yeah, this is a uh, go go for this one among the exceeds donors. And uh, now let's go to the to the non-donor budget decks. So this is Ninja and. Among all the budget decks I show this video, this is probably going to be the most competent. Now, you do need to buy three structure decks for this, so it is at minimum 1500 gems. Whether you consider that budget or not, it's uh, up to your discretion. Uh, the other decks I'll show don't even need to spend the gems for them, but yeah, if you just have the, the gems to spare just to buy the three structures, you can play. You basically have this deck. Right, it's the ratios are even like really standard. You just run a three Tabari, three Mitsu, three Hanzo, all of the good ones, and then one each of Green, Baku, and Kagero. This is basically stuff you want to summon off of duplication. You don't really want to draw them, and then one Geo, which is just super a uh, book of Moon. Like uh, it's pretty pretty good when you're especially in a format where there's no link, so you're it's guaranteed to get. Value out of book effects. Speaking of book effects, books are crazy in ninjas. They're they're insane. They let you do dodge and uh, all stuff like veilers and imperms and negations on on your monsters. And these these are crazy this format because again no link, so they're good going first and second. This is a fusion deck. You're going to be playing against synchro decks and Xyz decks. So Pearly uh, gets wrecked by books. You you want to. Yeep you into a noir? No, I'm just gonna book your monster, and then you're not gonna get the noir. You're not gonna get shit on that. Uh, Blue Eclipse is the same thing. It's just it. It's better going second. Worse going first. Also gets ashed, which is a really an, an annoying interaction. So, you know. But uh, for these are like among some of the best non-engine in this format, and they they're rare and super rare. And Ninja synergized the best with them. So that that's cool. Uh, one Iron Digger. This is just like. Google, you can search and like three of uh, notebook. Again, these are all from the structure deck, so not none of these are added cost. Uh, three dancing leaves as your main uh, removal. Uh, three of this because I don't know what else to fit in the deck. You definitely don't need to run three of this. In fact, you can probably get away with even just running one of this. I'm only doing this for because of the budget build and. I'm assuming you have. I'm assuming no other URs at all. You can see it, the non-engine. It's just Ash, Valor, Nib, Imperm, and Judgment because these are from the bundle. You're, you probably have more Ashes. You probably have more Imperms. Run those over extra copies of the Julia. This is just the straight up the most budget uh, you can get for a ninja. and uh, three Crow because Crow is also good. Uh, Against synchro decks, synchro decks they have a lot of graveyard stuff, but also mainly it kills pearly, it kills the black cat effect, the Xe summon. You just crow the, the quick play spell, and their, you know, their their pearly is gone. Uh, yeah, I've got to mention against the synch the synchro decks, a lot of them are trying to calamity lock you. So these at least you can attempt to do, do these in a draw phase before the crimson dragon to calamity locks you. You know, it's it's better better than nothing. And the extra deck, all that matters is literally just three of this and three of this. That that this is this is all you need. This is all of this random shit. It's just here for like, uh, these are like super poly targets you can run if you happen to have super poly. Again, I'm not putting super poly in here because super poly isn't budget. But if you do own them, uh, keep in mind that these are the options you can have. And then ultimate great insect is like actually pretty good in ninja specifically. It's not um necessary, but it, it, it's just uh you can make this with uh mitsu because mitsu is an <laughs> insect monster with over 2k defense and that's the 
uh, requirements you need to special summon ultimate great insect. Again, this is kind of just a funny thing. It's not really the most important part. It's it's just free that you can make it sometimes. Uh, the only, in terms of like core cards, the only thing this deck is really missing is the Link to Sizo, which sets a Ninjutsu out from the deck. Which yeah, that's nice, but. I mean, for a deck that doesn't really cost any URs, I mean, this, this is pretty good. You can't really complain. Like, the other deck that I was keeping looking into was Cyber Dragon. It's also a structure deck, but Cyber Dragon is missing a lot more than just one Link monster from their extra deck. They're missing a few Links. Almirage is very important for that strategy. Uh, uh, Seeger, which is the Link to Cyber Dragon, you know, you can't play that in your fusion deck. There's no Verte. And uh, you're probably going to be playing the fusion with Cyber Dragon, so you're going to be playing. You're going to be lacking Cyber Dragon, Infinity, and Nova as well. So that's like half the extra decks that Cyber Dragon is missing if you go that route. That's why uh, I think Ninja is the uh, the superior structure deck for this event. And yeah, that's I, I again. This is this is a bare bones build. I put in SRs and I only put in but no URs. If you have more UR hand traps, and more UR stables, put them. And like I said, over the duplications and over uh, uh, maybe the crows. Although I think I think crows are good at anyways, but maybe not as necessary if you already run six books. But yeah, that's ninjas for the synchro decks. My girl. Obviously, this is probably the best you're gonna get with a budget synchro deck because the sword soul deck is mostly just free now. So. We're using the Sword Soul core and then we're just adding what cheap non-engine on top of it. Uh, 3 Moye, 2 Taya, 3 Ecclesia, 3 Long Gun, uh, 3 Immersions, uh, standard ratio. Uh, st I'm still running the Tennies, even though obviously without links, the Tennies are significantly worse. So I've cut down Mashuda, Adara, and Shatana. Well, Shatana, you already run one off anyways, but I've cut Adara and Mashuda down to one. Just as thus, you can, like, utility stuff you can access when you, like, dump Taya or then you can get off of a Shuna when you have a, a, a ha, when you have place with, like, an extra token, like, for example, ditching a Shuna with Long and that's how you can still get the Ashuna effect. Obviously, these are going to come off less often, so you don't actually want to draw these. Drawing these by themselves does nothing now because you can't just turn them into a monk. But yeah, you still need the Shifana if you're running. The Heavenly Dragon Circle. I think Heavenly Dragon Circle is a really, uh, it's still really nice. Lets you dodge Valor and Imperm, which is like the biggest problem on Moye, and still lets you go into Chi Shell afterwards. It also is sort of consistency. It lets you. There's only like nine-ish copies of Moye in this deck, and you obviously you can't really do the. You can't really use Ashuna plus another Tenny to access your Chi Shell that way because there's no uh, Monk, so you, it's hard to do that. But worst case scenario, Heavenly Dragon Circle is just more copies of, of Moye or uh, Taya if you if you so desire, or like Long End. Like this, this is this is card is like pretty nice. It's uh, your opponents on. Are you gonna play against like a Mirror Jade, for example? If they for some reason want to Mirror Jade your. <laughs> Your Tenny, which I'd actually no, never mind. They're never gonna mirror Jade your Tenny monster now because it, it doesn't do anything by itself. Forget I forget that. This is a uh, just just like more ways to dodge Valor, and and it's and it's budget. It's rare. And on like Call by the Grave and Cross Out, even though you should probably have those. If you don't, this is uh, the budget version of that. Um, so specifically, I'm oh yeah, one 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 black hole. Maybe you. Since it's a budget build, you could probably get run two as well, so like it doesn't get banished off the Zyrus as often, and you could have one follow up and just one search one, turn one, two. Um, yeah, the Valor, Ash, Droplet, these are in front, these are all from bundles, so like they don't cost any gems. Same with Lightning Storm. Specifically, Ash, fuck. <laughs> Like fuck your Dino Morphia domain and frenzy. Like like you don't you don't want to be facing a Rex term with this deck. Same with Droplet, Droplet F and F Rex term. Uh, in perm is just and Valor are just non engine that you can draw into to supplement your board turn one. Gamma is it's filler. I if you have better hand traps, you're not gonna you can play them over Gamma. Like you have 
I'm assuming this is based on like you have basically nothing. Like this is why we're going bare bones on like the URs. But most people should have more copies of Ash and like Inver, right? And if you if you do, you can replace the Gammas with that. This is Gamma is just the the super budget option that's not even a UR, but still a decent as a hand drop. And uh, so Crow and Book, I think these cards are actually really good because you're a synchro deck, so you're gonna play against Pearly and you're gonna play against Fusion decks. Crow is insane against every fusion deck. Like tier, get get those tier names out of the grave, bro. Uh, Pearly, when they go for Black Hat's effect, you can crow the the quick play spell out of your grave to the Black Hat effect, and then and then their Black Hat for Lily will not resolve, so they don't even get the XCs. They don't get that uh, baby nor, or they and they don't get that plump. So DD Crow is actually just a really good hand trap versus Pearly, and Pearly, you know, having good hand traps against Pearly is uh, key. Uh, Book of Moon, same same thing. Book of Moon also uh, stops Yeep. You chain Book of Moon to the Yeep target, and then they don't get the the Nor, and then you get the you don't have to deal with a Nor because this deck, as you can tell, this deck really struggles to actually deal with a Nor that's already on the field. So you want to prevent that with the these two. And book is also an, another L to Rex term because uh, all, all my homies hate skill rain on legs. Uh, yeah, ob obviously the you're probably gonna have better hand traps than Gamma, like I said. So the, the deck is gonna look a lot cleaner. But I would still possibly recommend Crow and Book and Moon, even if you have less budget options and more URs to replace them with. Uh, the extra deck, all you really need are the Chi Shao, uh, the Changing, and the. The uh, seizing lion. These are from the the structure deck, and you sh need to get a baron. Like you should have a baron already. Like even if you don't own a baron, I th I recommend you just craft a baron because so many decks are gonna use baron. You're gonna definitely get you're gonna, you're gonna definitely get your money's worth out of crafting this if you already have it. This is the only not you are not from the source soul structure deck that I would that I would say you definitely need, and. I guess a second Chi Shao too. You, you might be able to get away with just one Chi Shao because the Sorcerer Structure only comes with one Chi Shao, but the second one would be the next UR craft, I would suggest. And then you don't really need any of You don't need these other URs. Like, this is just. This is honestly only here because I don't have the Tennies, but like, this is. You made this with a, with a token because the tokens are water. But I mean, you, this isn't necessary. Pep isn't necessary. A uh, Draco Berserker, it's nice, but you don't need it. Same with Dragite. Uh, you need uh, Boxia, but it's a super rare, so it's fine. Same with Yazi, White, and uh, Chaofang. I do like Chaofang li lines, but uh, well, no, actually, no. How the fuck do I use Chaofang without Tennies? Yeah, you don't need the Chaofang either. All, all you need to craft, the only necessary craft in this entire deck is, is one Baron. And like that's not you should have a Baron on your account anyway. It's good to have. So yeah, this is uh this is about as budget as uh, I would go for a synchro uh, sword soul deck. Oh, and it, I guess some non-budget options if for some reason you want to play sword soul or you have these cards. Uh, obviously, Duster D Duster is surprisingly not a bundle yet, so that's why I didn't include it. You know, most people already have Duster, and then Red Reboot is actually Red Reboot is really good. I. <laughs> In a synchro deck, Red Reboot hits Dino Morbia, it hits the Tiernament's trap cards, but most importantly, it hits Pearly Eep. So they, that's another way to just prevent Noir. So yeah, that's uh, really nice. Alright, let them cook. The, the, the sus hips themselves. And uh, if, any, if any actual Sushit player is watching this video, let me know the proper ratios for a budget build. I literally just put in three of every suit ship because I don't I don't know the proper ratios. But yeah, if I'm not supposed to run one match hobby with one of these, let me know. But yeah, this is a rank four exceeds like I believe you want to go blind second with this. Because you're also running a Utopia double OTK package. Now you do need Utopia. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately this isn't a structure deck, so you can just buy a structure deck and just get the Utopia that way. So 500 gems, it's it's okay. It's probably cheaper than the average cost of a UR that way. And um, yeah, this is 
this is all very simple. This is the, uh, this is Shari, the best card in the deck by far. Three ten goldfish, literally just to help with rank four spamming, and all of these. Um, as far as I'm concerned, all of these are just different sorts of extenders. If you either control Shari, then you can special summon uh, this from the hand, for example. You can special the well, Shir Shira. <laughs> My Japanese is so bad. You can summon this sushi from your hand. They're all level fours. Ikura, uh, Shari Red. While well, the, in the deck or graveyard, you can only use each of the following once per. So you can special summon this from the hand, and then if you special summon, special summon one Gunkin monster from your deck, and then special summon your extra one Exceeds monster. Then oh my god, is this a one card Exceeds? Damn. I wasn't aware of your game, Stu Ships. You guys you guys have good cards too. So yeah, obviously this is the best card and this is a one card exceeds. This one is a, just an extender. And you can special this and a Shari out of your hand. And then that gets you a rank 4 exceeds without a normal summon. This one can just special summon and it's same special summon itself if you if you control uh Shari and then you can also uh, special another Gunkin monster from your hand. This one is probably the least reliable one because this requires you to excavate the top three cards, and then uh, if you excavate a Shari, you can you can special summon it. But obviously, without it's you have to like use stacking effects. That's it's like really weird. That seems like a lot of work for a, a little payoff. But you you know what you you gotta do what you gotta do. And then budget board breakers. So why the hell is Rhoda in? These aren't. These aren't warriors. What? The, what the, yeah, no, no. You, you, you don't need that. The, yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll explain this card later, I guess. So, board breakers, dark hole, regeki is free, unexpected die, painful decision, more shardies, pot of desires because why wouldn't you want a pot of greed? I guess. Uh, bundle, bundle, bundle. Gunkin Sushi Cash. This just basically it adds another. Uh, Gunkin monster from your hand. Your opponent's not gonna know the correct one to call, <laughs> so <laughs> you, you don't gotta worry about this blowing, uh, blowing itself up or anything. And uh, triple chalice. F your Rex term. F your your Rex term. Don't just say that. Same with droplets. F F your Rex term and also uh, bundle. So it's free. Ash. F your Rex term. Uh, double or nothing for the Utopia. The extra deck is uh, that this is your sixth materials use package. I, again, you should, you probably want Zeus for this deck, but you should have Zeus on your account. If you're gonna play this account at all, like with Baron, you should have Zeus in it. So like, if you don't somehow miraculously don't have a Zeus, just just crap a Zeus. You're gonna need it eventually, anyways. And uh, Dugar, this is just random mixies. Like you have the four, uh. The th three different Gunkin Sioux ships, they all uh, gain. They all let you draw a card when you summon it because you probably you're probably going to use a Shari to exceed it. And then if they have the proper one, they get gain the bonus effect. Like uh, if this is made with Jirajiro, uh, you can add a Gunkin spell trap from your deck to your hand, which is going to be this one because that's the only one we run. Uh, Ikura, you can make a second battle. Uh, Titan Tactor in the battle phase. If you if it has this as a material and Uni, this has uh, it can attack directly. If it has a uh, Uni as a material, I think this one also negates your opponent's monsters effect. So this is probably the best one with the most relevant effect. And this one inflicts uh, when your Gungan monsters inflicts battle damage. You can target one card. So yeah, if you, yeah, if you do battle damage, you can also dest destroy card, pop your opponent's cards. But I mean, Zeus is more efficient at doing that anyways. So Yeah, Vespacito. This is not necessary. This is just because you run the Utopia pack. If I happen for some reason to have a Utopia dialing again, this... All that really matters in the extra deck are like your Zeus ship exceeds and then like your double or nothing and then your Zeus and your uh, Zodiac package. And this is funny. This is like a normal Xyz support. Like uh, you can add a normal monster from deck to your hand, and it, if it has a normal monster as material, you can. It's like a cataster that sends 
your opponent's monster if they if they have the same attribute as a normal monster. So because these are fire, maybe it's not going to be as com or it's not going to be as common. You get the send effect, but you know it's <laughs> it's it's an option. This this card exists. Also, piercing the darkness. Normal summon support. I didn't know this card existed. If, if you special a non-token normal, you get to draw a card. Nice. And then, if you uh, if you have a, a monster that was Xyz summon using a normal monster, it basically gains the attack of of your opponent's monster until the end of this turn. So you can imagine piercing darkness combined with an something like an uh. Ikura class that can attack twice, you know, that's uh, loads of damage. And uh, this th don't th this doesn't work with Utopia, just <laughs> because by the time you Utopia double into Utopia, it's not going to have normal monsters as material anymore because you detach them. But it's a, this is a funny card. I don't know if this card is actually good. Like, uh, y if you have stuff like Duster or Red Reboot or like better staples or like better board breakers, like more lightning storms. I would probably run those over Peers in the Darkness, but you know, this is a... We're, we're playing budget builds, and this is an SR, so it's technically budget, but yeah, it's Sioux shit, man. <laughs> I, I'm sure if you play this a little, you can op probably optimize it a bit better than I have, because this is like my first crack at it. I haven't played Sioux this before, but this is a... This is a deck that you can play, and it is very budget and uh, very cheap. So yeah, hopefully between the loners and some of the decks I've shown that you should be able to find at least one fusion synchro and exceeds like that you can play uh, for this event mainly to probably complete the missions that are definitely going to require you to fusion synchro and exceed summon for this event uh yeah if, if you actually own a proper deck for this event and don't need to go super budget I I made another video showcasing some of the strongest decks for this event that are you know definitely have a lot more URs than the decks that I've shown here